Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial where we will build an embeddable widget using React TypeScript. So this is the end product that uh, I have built. So this is more of a code walkthrough than a live coding session because I find uh, that this way it will give me more time to explain what I need to explain rather than you watching me type things out. It can be quite boring and tedious. Anyways. So here on port 5000, so I've built the widget and served it. So it's nothing special about this. Uh, it's just a simple widget. Uh, really, it's simpler than a widget. It's not even a real widget. It does nothing except for a button that say hello from widget. So let's have a look at the code. Nothing fancy. Uh, we'll get to the important stuff of the code. So this is pretty much uh, everything that you see here. We'll pay attention to this. Uh, but beside that, nothing special really. Um, you guys can definitely view this by yourself. All right, let's get back to here. What we do is that we embed the widget into a second uh, um, React app, or you can embed it anywhere because we embed it not but via the iframe way because there's limitation to the iframe way, um, like such as passing in parameters into the widget, which we can and we have done here. And I'll take us through that. Let me zoom in maybe, just in case. There you go, oh, too much. There we go. Um, passing in parameters from the main site into here. So if I click here, you can see that it updates from this on the site as well as in the widget. And, but the widget too, still retains, uh, its um, original functionality. All right, now let's have a look at the code. Let's start with how does this all work. So um, there are two packages that we I've installed to make it all work. Um, one is called React App Rewired, and I've installed them as dev dependencies. And the other one is called Customize CRA. So why do we need these two packages? Actually, we need, uh, yeah, we only need two. So if you create a React app using npx create React app, everything is pretty much bundled up nicely for you and hidden away through a, a layer of abstraction. So you don't really know what's happening but uh, underneath, but it is very efficient when you want to get started. Um, there are pros and cons against using Re Create React app, and there's a lot of great articles discussing those pros and cons. Now, one of the cons is that you can't do configuration uh, unless you install React app rewired, because the Webpack configuration is hidden away from you, um, and to reach underneath uh, all uh, uh, underneath the hood, we need to. Um, uh, install React App Rewired and change the start build, and you can change the test also uh, from that to um, from React Scripts to React App Rewired. Basically, it's saying, "Hey, I am doing my own configuration, uh, so don't load the default configuration." Now, let's have a talk about the default configuration. Uh, if you built a React app before, i.e., running the React um, npm run build, you notice that it will create a build folder. And in the build folder, it will uh, create a manifest, um, a static, and then it will have, uh, in the JS folder, it will have three separate, or depending on how you separate the, your code through lazy loading, a topic for another day, you will have um, a runtime, main, chunk, and another file, so main three main JS files. And the problem with that is that what, when you change the code within your actual application, so let's say I change anything here from embeddable widget to my embeddable widget, when you run npm build again, you will get a different hash every time. Now, what we want, so, so the problem with them um, every time you what is it? um every time you change make a change to your application which you you probably would want to because you want to continuously iterate through it and improve it 
if you get a different hash every time you build it, the website that embedding your widget would have to update the two. And that's not very user friendly, is it? Like, let's say you want to distribute your widget amongst millions of different apps. And every time you make a change, you you tell you would then need to tell all of those widget um, websites that use your widget to update this code. And that's not very going to be very user friendly and people are not going to adopt your widget at all. I wouldn't. <laughs> anyway, so what you want to do is to make um, make these name unchanged. So every time you build it, it will spit out the same name over again. So whatever you do to your app, it won't break these uh, JS file because once you serve this build, uh, build folder, which we can have a look here, when you serve this build folder, you can see the files that are being uh, sent. Uh, so network, sorry, sources, right, here we go. So in static JS, you can see that's what's uh, being served. Okay, so we wanna make the names uh, unchanged. So the way we do that is to um, create a webpack config um, file, JS file config overrides and this is where we tell webpack how to output our build files okay so in here um so you you may notice that this is i said this is a react typescript tutorial but um here i'm just doing a js because this is outside of the source file and um, beside the t index of TSX, everything else can be JS, and that's why uh, when you install, when you install, um, create React um, React app rewired. Let me just go package. Uh, you don't actually have to install the TSX types version of it. Okay. All right. So here, what we do is um, so config so we create a config override and we export our config uh, configurations here so we leave everything the same but we're interested in the output here we will say hey uh, the file name is this my widget and the chunk name um, basically anything that's so this one and this one that's the chunk I uh, will call it uh, my widget and a name the reason what why you need this is that um, if you don't have this yeah, if you just have it like that, you can't really compile into one file. Um, if there is, I don't know how to do it yet, and it won't be in this tutorial. When it builds, it will build at least three files here. And um, it, it won't, if you don't have this name attribute, so the name attribute pertains to the file that it's currently writing. Basically, it will create this. And it will create uh, this one. So the name is two, and the next one is main. So the name of this file is main, and just we append my widget at the front. If you don't have that, it will override the first one that's been created, which is this one, this file name. And then it will chuck an error saying, like, why am I right overriding the one file? I can't do that. So that's why you need this. Um, Attribute the name attribute of the file within square bracket, and this type this syntax will tell Webpack that um, uh, the next file, the next chunk file that you create, uh, append my widget at the front and chuck its name in, then put in the extension. The path is basically it has to be an absolute path, it can't be a relative path. It's just saying like, what do you want to build this? If you put a this here will build into the a file, a folder, a dist folder. And some of this you don't really need to worry about, but that's, that's the main stuff here that you need to worry about. And once you run npm run build, it will build this file here, uh, this folder with the CSS um, and all of that. Now you can see that I didn't do anything for the CSS, it's because um, CSS usually. Uh, don't change, but you can pretty much do the same thing. All right, so 
Now, all right, once you've done that, it will check out these um, files. And what you want to do is in your website. So we're leaving the, the project for the widget now. We're going to the project for the website. What you want to do is um, create a div um, with an ID, an element with an ID that matches the ID that uh, you would mount the uh, the widget on on its own project. So, um, what I mean by that is within here, within the index.html, normally you would have an an ID of app or whatever or root. That's right. It's called root. And in here, you will I change it to my widget container or like whatever unique name you want to put it in. And then in your documentation, you would tell the person who is embedding your widget. Uh, what ID they need to put in uh, because uh, a change because root is a really common ID um, and, and it's just terrible name if you want to do an embedded widget so in this case I put the ID as my widget container and then uh, on the website I created a div with the same ID so this is where it will be mounted to don't worry about this for now that's passing data from the main website into the widget, which we'll discuss it shortly. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is, um, what I want to do is um, when the web, uh, my website load, I want it to load the widget. Remember that we have three static fi uh, files that we need to append to here. It's a script. So what we do is uh, we create um, three script element and with each script element, we assign the, um, the, the address of the source file. And in this case, this is the, the URL here and the port number. So if I don't serve this, so if I stop the uh, serving, so which I will for a second, and now I go back to here, you can see that it won't load the widget because the widget is offline which would you expect which you would expect so let's just turn that back on all right so the widget should start working again yep there we go all right so we assign so this is my widget we assign a url to each of these um my widget my widget 2 and then my widget main and then uh, we'll get a reference to the container which is this one Okay, and then we would append each of the script elements to the container. Now the order does matter, so you gotta go runtime chunk and then main. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So ignore this if you just have this as an empty state uh, like this. What it will do, empty dependency array. Sorry, we do is that uh, when it first load the website it will um, try to load the widget all right so that's pretty much it on how to embed a widget now the next part is um, how we can pass data from our main website into our widget let's go back to the widget so here's in a widget file what we have here is uh, the app props and we'll pass in an ID, okay? The ID is the reference ID to the parent container, which is this one. Okay, because um, we need that to actually get the owner attribute, which is the owner data. So what we do here is that, let's get a um, reference to the wrapper and then we check if the wrapper does exist and then we'll get the attribute called owner data. Um, okay. And then what we'll do is we'll display the owner data down here. Now in the main website, um, we'll create a, here I've just created a button. And the button will uh, take an on-click listener and uh, every time it clicks it just increment the previous state which is just a number starting from zero by one and once um, 
you know, uh, so when it's update the state, we want it to reload this. Otherwise, uh, this, if I don't have this, what should happen? It doesn't load because the widget is only load once. We want it to refresh every time we update the um, our state here. So that's why we have to put owner data in the dependency array. And then we'll pass the the state into the widget, and which would then be read by this red get attribute. And that's pretty much it. That's how you do it. That's how you uh, create an embeddable widget in React and passing data into it, um, and overriding some Webpack configuration. So then we have a, a static build file names. I hope you guys learned from something from this and I, I leave uh, your feedback on how I did and any questions you may have. Thank you so much. Take care.